Okay, very good. Excellent. No, no, no. You already done. All right, so we're reviewing today the Bohr model when we did these electron configurations. So you can look at previous uh, YouTube videos that show this is a review. We're doing this again. Uh, the Lewis dot diagram is always associated with the outside electron shell. So this is what the Bohr model is for chlorine. And then the Lewis dot diagram is always the, starts with a V, raise your hand. Valence. The valence. Very good, Cody. I'll give you points for that. So these are the valence. These are the valence electrons, the ones on the outside. So what Cody just put on the board up there for oxygen are the valence electrons. How you doing? Lauren? Try to write down the bell work. The three answers are on the board. We've done this before. If you have a question, let me know. I don't have any other paper. This probably has it. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now this right here. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and answer that. Did we get this now? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Those are fairly easy to find. Yeah. Right here. You got this one to do. Don't have to do that. And then try to practice these. They're the same as what's right here. Okay. Now you don't have to color it a certain way, like I'm coloring. I first did the first example for you. But we're going to group them based on their characteristics. There are two characteristics we're going to look at, and I'll explain that to you on Monday. Um, I keep putting balls there. I put them right here. So two characteristics. You'll see that Monday. This corresponds to the main group. So the first activity we did was the atomic structure shortcut Lewis dot structures. And you'll notice that if you counted the groups across, 1, 2, and then 13 to 18, you get what number? Jake? Um, if you look at the first thing I gave you today, corresponding to this sheet, Eliza, what number are we examining here? First two groups and then 13 to 18, what number are we examining? No. Wait, I don't know. You want to if you out? have two groups here and you have six groups here, what's two plus six? Eight, right. So you can see how there's a correlation here and this activity. The reason why this activity is done because the focus is primarily on the main group elements because of the law of the octaves. The law of the octaves states that the elements will seek to get eight electrons around them. So the whole Lewis dot structure is looking at the valence electrons with the goal being eight. So what we're going to do, you're going to color these and then we're going to put them in the prop proper eight groups based on characteristics just like you see with this these are in eight groups based on characteristics like the first group has one electron around it and all of them do how do we know which ones are which well I'll tell you that later uh, there are characteristics like uh, arm length just like there are characteristics with hydrogen being different from cesium and the main one would be size hydrogen is a lot smaller than cesium so it's a similar concept that you're going to see with this. Because they don't speak Spanish. Lauren, your coloring is fantastic. Thank you. Oh, Hannah, really good. Uh, we have colored pencils up there. You can choose really. The coloring isn't going to matter. It's not. We're not going to separate them based on color. The color just kind of makes it uh, more engaging for you. Are they like from Florida? Mm, I guess so. Or they just get spray tans. Florida's like, oh, spray tans. It's always exciting. So what you, what's your like style, Eliza? They're aliens. 
Aliens? Yep, and blue. You're going to color them all the same? Yeah, no. They're, they switch off. Oh, they're going to switch out? They're going to switch their black and brown outfits. Now, what's your strategy, Jake? Hmm? What's your strategy? I'm trying to get this done. You're just trying to get this done. <laughs> Objective. <laughs> I didn't. I meant to get you up here when you when you did these answers. I just forgot to grab the uh, video. Well, uh, we can see your handwriting is very uh, fantastic. So, thank you, Rain and Hope and Nate for doing the first three. This chart right here is based on the law of the octaves. If you look at music, there are eight notes, so there are eight predictable groups. So the first two are the S, S1 and S2, and then the next six are the P, P1 to, to 6, right? So they've given you the electron dot structures, and they want you to practice drawing them on the back page. So I want you to do that. I also want you to take some time to turn in the lab from yesterday. So you got the lab right up. You're going to write about the lab, what you did, and then you're going to show your data, predict your error, like this group had 9% error. And then lastly, you're going to tell us the, the mistakes that you found on the periodic table. Just like you see in this group here. Excellent. Nice job, Simon. Juan, the answers are right here. So you'll see that for nitrogen, there's the answer. You just want to color it in, bubble it in right there. And then oxygen is right there. Calcium, right, right there. So bubble those in. With the electron dot structure, they want you to follow a specific pattern like you see here with calcium. You can't do calcium like one dot here and one dot here. Experiments have shown that the electrons are going to disperse like you see here. So the whole periodic table that I've provided for you lines them up this way. You can see that calcium and magnesium all follow this pattern. Color in the day, right? And then on Monday, we will cut them out. Doing the valence. So the purpose of this Lewis dot always focuses on the valence. So if you look at the paper that I gave you, you can see how we have the Lewis dot for chlorine. That's the Bohr model. Uh -huh. And then we have the Lewis dot here. This is the Lewis dot, this is the Bohr model. Sounds right, yeah. Okay, so we're doing nitrogen, nitrogen, not oxygen. So you did oxygen there. We no, want to do nitrogen. oxygen. Right. Nitrogen. But you're going to want to put an N there. See how there's an N right here? See the CL? So draw this, erase the circle. This is how the valence is always shown. You put the symbol on the inside. Very good. So, TT made a great point for you to understand. Lily, you're on video. So the point is that when we're doing the Bohr model, you look at the proton and the neutron number. When you do the Lewis diagram or, or the Lewis dot structure, you're going to look at the valence electrons. The valence are the ones on the outside. So if you look at the Bohr model here, we got two, four, six, seven on the outside, and they're showing you seven there. So the Bohr model we did earlier in the week, you should have no trouble placing the 17 electrons for chlorine, like you're seeing up here on my sheet. So we've done the first two on the board, nitrogen and oxygen. Here you can do the last one. P is associated with the PX, PY, PZ, the dumbbell shape that we looked at starting on Monday. So the P is a shape and the S is a shape. The S and the P designate the main group, the law of the octaves. That is, every element is trying to get to eight. So the bell work, we have nitrogen, oxygen, and calcium done for you on the board. Activity was designed by the American Association of Chemistry Teachers, so you'll find it on that location, but you have to pay $50 to see the answers, which I'm not going to show you. The point concerns the valence electrons and their significance. Got a video of Brendan doing some nice work here. Some good color in there. Awesome. Miracle.
make some happy. Oh, let's go over here and look at TT. She's got a bunch of colors in her hand. Hey, if we call her all of them gray, or do we get oh, she's got Can a pattern going. You? Can I hear you on that? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm Guess sorry. It's a go <laughs> three are on the board up here for bell work, so you should have all three of those correct on your paper. If you don't have them written down, please do that now because the electron dot structure is something the state wants you to know about. They have these tests that they want to give you and that's one of the questions on there. It's pretty important about predicting a lot of things like formulas, main group. So I want you to draw a line to this showing valence, electrons, valence. What? The valence electrons. Oh. We want you to label that because most of you, hopefully by now, have heard the word valence. Never heard of it. Really. I've heard of it because okay. I've done my research. One of the drawings that they had you do on Tuesday, they asked you to identify the valence electrons. How many you had? So how many does chlorine have around it? Two. No. Three valence electrons. Seven. seven. Yeah, so chlorine has seven. Now, if you look at the P5 group, Rosebud, see the P5 group? They all have seven. If you notice, they all are the same electron configuration. So if you're in the same family, you tend to do similar things. It's all the same. The apple does not fall far from the tree. tree. Boy, Bush. Isn't that wonderful saying? The oh. apple tree. Yeah, it doesn't fall oh, far from the tree. So you're going to behave similar to your family. And you'll notice that with oxygen, they all have the same configuration. Now, with calcium, you can think, well, I just want to draw it however I want to draw it. Let's just put CA, which is the symbol, and then a dot here at 12 o'clock, and then a dot here at 3 o'clock. Right? Can we do that? No. no, that is not what we have found during experiments. Experiments show that the electrons will disperse and balance. So unfortunately, how we had that drawn, that would not promote balance. Yes. It's called tada. No, I tried to video students doing the correct thing. Nice job, Alyssa. I need to sharpen this. Excellent. Nice job. You, you can do the next one as well. I'll give you 10 points for that, yeah. No, that's good. Let's get a boy. When you draw these, there's a specific pattern you have to do. You can't start at 12 o'clock and move to 3 o'clock. They're wanting you to disperse these electrons where they're evenly balanced. So if you look on the table that I gave you when you walked in, this table right here, you'll see, John, you'll see this pattern. Now I want you to draw the bell work in these three boxes. So we just did the bell work. So you should have these three boxes correctly answered. See that? Now, also I want you to draw an arrow to where it says chlorine. See the CL there? And, and on that arrow I want you to place valence electrons. When you're doing Lewis dot, Trey, when you're doing Lewis dot, you're trying to identify the outside electrons. Those are called valence or outside electrons. So how many bears? Like, the yes. Right. These are in groups here. You can see like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are in the 5P group. At the top of your paper as well, I'd like for you to write S and P. Josh, octaves is what we use in chemistry to predict patterns. So you'll notice that with 17, P5, they all have five valence electrons around. Correction, they all have seven valence electrons because the five and the two makes seven. Five plus two is seven, right? Now there's an old saying, Ethan, the apple does not fall far from the tree. 
So you'll notice that in chemistry, we tend to group things together. If you go to a doctor, they're going to ask you about your family history. You know, if you do something wrong, they're going to ask you about your family history. If you do something right, they're going to ask you about your family history. Especially if it's a sport or it's academics. They want to know your background a little bit so that they can predict whether you know you're in the right, you know, situation. Whatever that situation may be. So, keep that in mind. Now, Noah, you can get into a new group if you work a little bit harder as far as if you academically you know Challenge study yourself. yeah you have to study in order to get out of a of let's say a bad group keep that in mind Nice job, Alexis. I came over here just to video your nice work.